Inventions is a strategic game that immerses players in the evolution of ideas and technological progress. Since the dawn of time, humans have pushed the boundaries of innovation, surpassing other species through their mastery of tools. In this game, players simulate the creation of new ideas using cards, which later transform into real inventions. Sharing these inventions with the world and other societies amplifies their effectiveness. The objective is to accumulate ingenuity points and thereby fame as a measure of societal advancement. The player at the end of the sixth era with the most points emerges as the victor, reflecting the strength of their society. Become an inventor now and back Inventions Evolution of Ideas on Kickstarter. Hey. So here we all are. Okay, hey gamers, and welcome to Eagle Griffin Games. My name is Rachel. Today I have an amazing opportunity to talk to these awesome three guests um, who know something about inventions. I mean, just a little, I guess, um, which is live now on Kickstarter. But before we continue, I do want to thank Ryan from One Board Family. He was the one that helped me with this whole re restream process in order for us to do this designer developers diaries for all of you today. So if you don't know who Ryan is, please check him out, One Board Family. And thank you so much, Ryan, for helping me out. Now, at the beginning of this month, um, I asked, and so did Shelly on Vital's Discord, we asked everybody if you could have one question sent to Vital or his game developers, what would that question be about inventions? So I gathered all of the questions, chose some, because some of them were repetitive, sent them to these three lovely people, and here we are. So they're gonna answer all those questions today for you all, and I am excited to hear what they have to say. But before we do, I want to introduce you guys all to them. So we're gonna start with the game designer, and he is on my screen to the right. So that is Vital. On the bottom. <laughs> yes, the bottom right. <laughs> so, hey. hi everyone. I'm Vital Lacerda. Uh, you may know me for designing one game or two. So, and oh I am the designer of Invention. Um, oh, the one that's right behind like you. Once it's out. Uh, yeah, that's the Inventions in the prototype form. Uh -huh. uh, it's not the game, it's just a, a prototype that works. Anyway, um, you know me for those games or some games, and I hope you like the next one that is right now on Kickstarter. Go there and back it. <laughs> the QR code. Who's next? <laughs> Scott. Scott. <laughs> I guess he's over here. <laughs> OK, I'll go, I'll go next. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, one of Vitel's many playtesters, uh, developer on inventions, and constant thorn in Vitel's side. <laughs> That's awesome. Shelly? Um, I'm Shelly. <clears throat> uh, I'm also one of Vitel's playtesters. I joined his server a while ago, and I became like this bad weed that attached to him and just kept... He couldn't get rid of me. I stuck around. <laughs> Nice, nice. Okay, so you kind of talked about it already, Shelly, but we'll go into the first question, which is how and when did you all virtually meet and have any of you met in person? <laughs> I mean, thought you well, could go first because you've met in person. Virtually, virtually, I met everyone on my Discord server because they just show up. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. then I, 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 I met I met Scott once in uh, GridCon last year, and it was a pleasure oh, to, nice. to see you see him for the first time. It's it's a it was a great time for me. And Shelly, that is the first time I <laughs> I see Shelly live. I wow! Never even see a picture from her. So yeah, that's <laughs> new. It's usually a cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's usually a cat. Yeah. <laughs> It's usually a cat, right. I, I joked about it that I wouldn't have a video. I said to Scott, I'm like, I'm just going to put a picture of one of my cats in this spot, and you'll just hear my voice yes. and see a Siamese cat. Well, you and have a, a cat in the, your shirt. I did. I wore my I wore my cat shirt today. <laughs> good job, good job. Um, and Scott has Marvel on, I think, yes. today. Yes, yeah, it's a Marvel t-shirt. Nice, nice. I, I'm, I'm representing, you know, Eagle Griffin. Well, and I don't know what's on the top. 
Okay, so the next question is, how did you, Shelly and Scott, end up being game developers, not designers, as I know, you know, Scott was so excited about, um, <laughs> on inventions? Uh, yeah, so as VTOL and Shelly said, we, we joined uh, VTOL's Discord. I joined in like uh, 2018. 2018. Um, and then, yeah, lurked for a while. And I think the first game I got involved with uh, was on Mars right at the very end mm. of development. And nice. I, I, yeah, I, I, I looked up my comments on the Discord the other day, and like my first comment is one word wow, <laughs> and it's <laughs> in the, the, an image of the on Mars board. And, and yeah, after that, just like started play testing and um, nice. yeah, got involved and just more and more involved as time has gone on. It's a game yeah. developer. Yeah. <laughs> just show up on the server and harass Vital, and he'll give you a title. <laughs> of some kind. Is that a tip for all the board game community people? Sure. Just harass Vital. <laughs> just harass Vital. <laughs> I enjoy doing it daily, so it, it's uh, paid off. <laughs> <laughs> now, Shelly, I, I don't know, just so like, don't like listen to, to her. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like to hear that, Vital? Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, <laughs> Shelly, <laughs> Shelly, oh, how did you become an uh, a developer? It was pretty much the same for me. Um, Vital's first game that I backed was the Gallerist because I thought it was just like the most interesting theme. And from there, I found his Discord server joined it and it was about a year before i really kind of play tested anything like scott started on on mars i didn't start until weather machine i was one of the first play testers on weather machine he tested like at 6 30 in the morning my time at that time we did the one play test he went to Eston with it presented it to eagle griffin games and he said sure we'll take it and then i just kind of showed up every week thereafter play testing on it answering questions harassing and him. just harassing him yeah <laughs> <laughs> it just it just kind of moved forward from there i mean and kind of added some engagement to his discord server as it grew and grew over time i mean when i joined there was only like 15 people and now we have over 1500 yeah it's, it's amazing how how much it's grown since 2017 yeah and th these two guys spend so many hours play testing the game that does it's incredible uh, i don't know how many hours they spend so I have 600 plus together. on inventions. Yeah. If you look at Tabletopia, it says 600 plus hours <laughs> that I've spent. Yeah, it's now crazy. you understand I, I, how I get a little bit uh, sad when I say that some players just play the game like one time and two hours uh, in the mid game and say, oh, the game is not good. So these guys right. spend 600 hours developing the game and then, well, uh, I hope this not happen in the next game <laughs> because I... <laughs> I don't like to hear it, but I have to sometimes. But yeah, you do. Uh, but the games does not does not great. appeal to everybody. But I hope this one will. So it's a, I think it's a good one. We made a good game. Yeah. That's good to yeah. know. Now you. Guys <laughs> it did is ask, right. <laughs> boy, it is. Oh no, I love I love inventions, but we're not yeah. there yet. We're still introducing. <laughs> um, so. Now, you guys kind of answered this already. Um, you guys both have helped Vital on previous games. Um, now, can you just kind of reiterate one more time which ones those were? Scott? Uh, yeah. So, as I said, very little on on Mars right at the end. And then the My On favorite. Mars solo I did a, a bit on. Then the expansion for On Mars, Alien Invasion. Um Weather Machine Inventions and his latest design that we're currently playtesting. The speakeasy one? Yes. Oh, I that one, already. right. The yeah. one with the mobsters and stuff. And yeah, that yeah. one. Killing people and all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I have playtested on Weather Machine, Alien Invasion, both the solo and the co-op chapters, Mercado de Lisboa, a tiny, tiny bit of House of Fado, uh, Inventions, Speakeasy. I think that's all of them. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you didn't try yet uh, Santa Justa, that is the next Yeah, one, I haven't, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Santa Justa hasn't made it to the server no. yet. You and Quintella, well, Quintella are still we, we don't, with it. We don't have a publisher for that one yet, so <laughs> I'm not authorized to yeah. play that. Yeah, uh, and I can't say anything. <laughs> you, you play tested, you play tested uh, Alien Invasion, right, Scott? Yeah. You did, yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. We, we play against Julian all the time, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I don't think I can play <laughs> chapter two without Julian. Like Julian to me is just the alien for that. Yeah, he's the alien. He played it's it so alien. much. Yeah. He, he lost yeah. every time that it's. <laughs> <laughs> Do it balance. What's yeah, like a balance? Like you, you win a few times. We have to adjust the game for that. But yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I have not played Alien Invasion yet. Yeah, I have it, and I want to play. It. Well, Ma on Mars is like my favorite game. And yeah. we moved, and I have not found anybody to want to play <laughs> your games. Um, yeah, and so terrible. it has been – I know, right? We should move again. Um, and so <laughs> I've been searching. <laughs> if not found Move anybody. to Portugal. I have but, so many people willing to play my games here. Well, if you buy me a plane ticket, then, yeah. you know, I'll come play with you. <laughs> okay, so we did a little introduction, and now we're going to the actual – the p meat and potatoes of the inventions, all designer diaries, whatever they're called. And so the first question that was asked, um, they were both kind of the same, so I put them together. Um, the Vines, I think that's how you say it. I don't know, from Instagram and also Steph from y'all's Discord. Um, the Vine said, what inspired the theme and mechanics of the game? And what emotions are you trying to elicit from us? And then Steph asked, where did the inspirations for the game inventions come from? Oh, it's, it's for me, the question? Yes. It's all of yes. you guys saying yes. <laughs> Shelly saying yes. I yes. think this is a veto question. <laughs> I, um, this, this is a veto question. It's, it's, it's I designer. gave you the questions in advance, Vital. So you had time oh, to read Oh, did you? <laughs> yes, like two weeks ago. Um, I read this uh, that, question and put I, I the towel. Um, <laughs> right. Um, well, the, the premise of the game is quite simple, right? Um, it, the premise of the game is just basically what, how ideas and technology uh, contribute to the evolution of uh, societies from the old times, from Stone Age until our times, okay? That is the premise of the game. That's quite simple. They have an evolution of ideas. Where did, what emotions I want to try that? I, I want to like, I want to, um, to give people the feeling that they are evolving the ideas and how humanity could uh, evolve during all of this, that times based in technology and against the other type of games that uh, we always have like civilization games. Um, this is just about um, cooperation between societies and technology. It does not have religion, politics, or any wars. Okay, so and the inspiration of to make this game is just because I'm a technology uh, technology freak. So I really like technology. So I have to do something about that, and um, that's how the ideas just came about. Uh, the inventions just came about, and basically that's it. It's not much to talk about it. It's I would like to tell a story to people. Yeah, I'd like to tell a story to people, and the story is a specific one in how technology and ideas help people to evolve. Just that. Yeah. Now, how did so, you choose the mechanics, though? Oh, the mechanics have to be with these guys: playtesting, 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 playtesting. <laughs> Um, I had since the beginning a, a core of the game that I would like to also, to, I like usually to keep in my mechanisms on the games. Uh, I found two or three uh, base or core uh, mechanisms that I try to develop after that by playtesting. Um, and in this case were, were the evolution of ideas precisely. It's like someone can present an idea and then uh, another society or the same society can invent or progress that make an evolution of that idea by making the invention and then that invention can be innovated and and finally sharing to the world because if you don't share the inventions to the world we cannot use it so right and societies right there can use them so this was ever the um, core of mechanisms of the game 
and then after that we just develop the game from there um, and I think that is something that we have since the beginning I believe that's true right uh, yeah I think Scott can agree with me that when we start play testing Vital play tests two to three times a week so he's constantly changing, changing from playtest to playtest. And I think the ongoing joke between we've got about eight to 10 regular testers that are there almost weekly. If they're not playing, they're listening in. And the joke is Vital comes and says, OK, guys, not much changes. And then he'll do 15 to 20 minutes of changes. And we'll say, that's quite a few changes this week. And I'll go, oh, but the core is the same. So no changes. The core is the same. It is. <laughs> and still, yeah. It still yeah, is the same like, as yeah. two years ago, right? So. Well, yeah, the, the core is there. Like, we were always kind of presenting and inventing and sharing ideas throughout the year plus of developing and designing the game. But how we are doing that and how Vital changed that over time changed. It's just funny because we all we all laugh and sometimes I'll send a direct message to Scott. I'm like, oh, yeah, the game's totally the same. Nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah. Right, Scott? Yeah, no, it's. Um, I think yeah, it's it's like little things change from uh, playtest to playtest, and by the end, it's a very different game mechanically. But the, yeah, as Vito was saying, the core is still there. The core has been there from the start. Yeah, he has the idea in uh, his head, and as we go through it, month to month, week to week. And someone new will come in to play test and say, da, da, da. And he's like, well, no, that's that's what I want. And from their feedback, he'll sleep on that. And the next play test, he'll have tweaked it or adjusted it slightly. And the tester will be like, yeah, that feels a lot better to me. Like, it's, it's a very interesting process. I've play tested for other designers. And I love that Mattel does his test live. And that he's there watching. So he's seen the, how players are doing it. It's just, it's a really interesting process of how he does it. I love it. <laughs> Many nights without sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <You get that. laughs> yeah. I've got indirect messages from him at 2.30 a.m. Shelly, da-da-da-da-da. And then I don't answer. He's like, oh, wait, you're sleeping. <laughs> just like, I'm in Canada. <laughs> oh, Canadians. Now, Scott and Shelly, did you have any mechanisms that you brought to the table and said, I think this would be good for the game? Uh... I can't think. I know that's not one of these questions. Yeah, yeah I can't think of <laughs> I, anything specific. I can't I, either because okay. it's um, kind of it's a team yeah. collaboration among the testers mm. and Vital. Yeah. We give them ideas. Like it was joking with Speakeasy the other day. I gave him an idea for something. He's like, mm. and then the next play test, I saw kind of a vision of my idea, but he puts his mm. twist on it, and I'm like DMing Scott and be like. It's not at all what I said. <laughs> like, it's it's similar to what you say, but as a designer, he's like, I like that, but it doesn't kind of meet my vision. So right. it sparks something in his mind, like an idea, right? Of, okay, right. Shelly said this or Scott or someone else at Playtest, and it leads to something great, something really good. Nice. I Shelly can't and pinpoint Scott, anything. Shelly and Scott have different ways to give me feedback. Usually Scott waits a day or two to write something about it. And uh, it, it, usually what I read, I just, I, well, I, I'm always afraid to read what is wrote about it. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that I'm going, I'm not going to sleep that night. Kelly is different. Oh, Kelly no. just, after the playtesting, she just takes, um, uh, shows their feel, her feelings and we talk about yeah. them. It's, the two ways to, to receive feedback, but it's always great feedback from them. So I'm yeah. very reactory. But Scott likes to think and kind of bake right. on it overnight. Right. A as you can see for the interview, right? By the interview, <laughs> Scott just thinks well before he says something. So, yeah. Well, he did ask for the <laughs> questions up in advance, which I am totally the same way. I can't think of things on like the spotlight. Like, don't ask me right then because i can't answer them so i totally understood so that's why i sent them in advance the tall you didn't look at them. I anyway <laughs> i'm sorry i should right no, i'll forgive I you this time. The, the, i don't know i i like to be spontaneous and um, i prefer not which is to great rules and just say what i feel at the moment that's how i design my games i just do it uh, people ask me for uh, many times many to your People that like te theory in game in, uh, game design ask me for mm -hmm. questions 
technical questions that I don't know how to answer. Uh, because I'm not a technical guy. I don't know mm. anything or I don't know much about uh, theory of game design. I read some mm. stuff, but I, it's not how I design the games. I just it's play just test see what is the best one. Yeah, I, I like to go with the flow. So, you know. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've made some awesome games, so I, I like your strategy there. That's the way you, <laughs> we work. So many people work in different ways. So everybody exactly. has different ways to work, right? Right. Now, the second, the next one, I don't know if it's a second. Um, Dunk Master B asked, I would love to know which mechani mechanisms in the game was the most fun to design slash build and what they feel separates design, this design from the others in their catalog. Um, what was the most fun? Well, the most fun was to find a way for the players don't take 25 actions in a row. <laughs> <laughs> we had yeah. great things with even especially and over where they could take actions in a row like one hour without stopping. Mm. So <laughs> we have to find a mechanism that, um, well, stop that craziness, right? <laughs> so, and then the chain actions just appear. And I think it was one of the, one of the most moment, fun moments to, um, uh, to have to, to, to resolve that problem, you know, in the, right. in the game design. Uh, another one is, uh, Scott knows better than me, that was, and he does not like it, when we took the, the uh, invention actions from the invention spot. Um, and I, before I, 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 I give the word to them, um, <laughs> just one thing more that is I think one of the things that most uh, separate this game from the other games besides the cooperative that you being competitive game you have very cooperative way to play but it's the um, way you can block yourself hmm. to take the actions you want and then you have to look for uh, ways to take those actions and that is what separates this game from my other games I think uh, thematically, is, uh, I really like how it feels and how it, uh, it shows players how it works well. Mechanically, I think it's um, basically that. That is, you can block yourself from the actions and players don't like that much, but it's your fault, not the other player's fault. And I, I, I like to... to... I like that. So, um, no. but th there are other ways. Like I saw once in a in an interview, there is always a parachute for the players. So, mm. yes. you will not be blocked by doing what you want. Just be. Rado was saying That's that too. What you have to do it. Yeah. Now, what was the thing that Scott didn't like? Oh, he uh, knows well. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you want me to answer that because you do have a question coming up about that. That's true. That's true. Okay, oh. then we'll we'll hold up on that one. But I'm very intrigued. Um, now, did you guys have anything <laughs> that was fun to help the tall design, you know, develop or build mechanically wise? Oh gosh, see, <sighs> it's tough to answer some of these questions because people. Like, we started testing on inventions in 2021, I believe. And now my brain is filled with speakeasy stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard for some of these questions to answer what the most kind of fun thing was to design. Like, the whole process for me is fun to, like, I really enjoy the playtesting process from the very beginning to the end. Like, that to me is fun. I like watching the game develop and seeing how everything goes. Um, I can't think of a specific thing to me that was the most fun. I mean, I really kind of loved how the ideas evolved from our player boards to a display to the regions. That was a really interesting process. I I remember there was a point with the player boards. Um, it was basically when the, the progress tiles got introduced and... Mm. Um, yeah, suddenly there was this other puzzle you, that you have to do on your player board, and that was that was really nice and interesting, and that added quite a lot to the game at that point. Because um, uh, it used to be rectangles, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, we had the rectangles, rectangles and That's, your citizen yeah, went up. <laughs> player board changed so many times. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and the other the other one was the the Vital mentioned the the action selection. I think that's... Mm -hmm. 
that is like it's the most for me it's the most interesting part of the game the having to think ahead to not only what you right. want to do in the current era but what you want to do in the future because you mm -hmm. can block yourself from doing things right. in the next era as well it's yeah it's really yeah. nice the, the depth yeah, of that watching... is really nice i love just, it just how societies should think right in the future mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, we should think. Yeah. We should. The, the depth of that is just so amazing to be like, oh, I've already got my season pillar and travel. I really want to travel. Oh, I right. can go and do it on Scott's milestone. But now I'm giving him an influence because his society right. is more advanced than mine. But I really want to travel. And those exactly. many trade offs that you do in the game to get, I really want to travel, but I'm going to do a couple things before I get to that point. And right. planning that puzzle out is just, I agree. It's really fun. It was fun watching Rado's video um, that he posted and he was so excited and how he was just like, <gasps> like it, he kept doing his yeah. hands like up in the air. Cause he, he was looking, he was like, Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, but wait. And then like he blocked himself. And so then he was like, but now what do I do? And he was just playing, you know, against the, the solo stuff, but it was so cool to watch just how, what you guys are talking about actually play out. Cause I did do the bl blind test. And I stunk, by the way, um, but <laughs> it was hard and I blocked myself a lot and it was hard trying to figure out how to go around that. Um, but don't, don't blame great. yourself. The game was not ready. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, OK, well, I, I must say when we had the prototype here, which we sent it on to the brothers Murph and they're planning on doing a live stream of that soon. Um, but we really wanted to play because you set out the game and you're like now what like i just spent like an hour setting this up and but we had to send it on but like it was really great it looked awesome by the way but that's not a question um so the next question <laughs> is uh bobby lamb on i think it's lamb on discord said what was the biggest challenge you had during the design of this game well, we, we just talked about that in the previous question. I, I think I answered by that. It's to stop the madness of someone doing actions without stopping. Um, and there are experts <laughs> for, the, for that. Yeah. Um, some of the playtesters just start taking actions and just didn't stop. Um, and that's, that was a challenge to, to, to find a good solution and end up by being a solution that is one of the craziest and more fun parts of the game. Uh, mm. Usually that happens in many of my games uh, because I play test it until something clicks and say, okay, the game is ready because I just found the bit that was missing. And these guys have want, uh, usually help me a lot with that, saying there is something that is not correct there, that is something that is missing. Nobody knows what it is. I never know what it is. Mm -hmm. And once I know, I know that the game is ready. And probably the chain awesome. actions were what makes the inventions close. So because, yeah, it was... Uh, well, after that, we took mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing that, uh, that uh, <laughs> Scott does not like it. And well, uh -huh. that was, was when we closed the game. But yeah, the biggest change, ch challenge was having something that I knew that I want to play is to find new ways mm -hmm. to get their actions and to do the actions that they should do to develop their societies. Uh, but um, uh, I didn't find a way to stop them in the natural. Uh, uh, I like to make the games more organic. So since the games are already difficult to explain, I like to have some mechanisms that you don't have to explain how to stop them, you know? Right. So you just stop them naturally. And the, the chain actions was one of those solutions. So, yeah. And that was the biggest challenge for me on the game. Um, because as, as I said, the, 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 the core mechanism from that I have, uh, that I want to show people in the game, that was the sharing of the inventions, the evolution of mm -hmm. the ideas, it's there from the beginning. Uh, it has different right. interactions, it has different ways to appear on the game. Um, but... Um, it was always the same. So that was not a big challenge. The challenge was to make that work. <laughs> so. 
Well, this make nice. it work and still be enjoyable because <laughs> the play, some of our playtesters are there from day one to the very last gunfire when Vital does that whole Eureka, it's done, yay, kind of thing. And I think the most chain actions one person got at one point was 14 in a row. And Vital was just wow. sitting there like, wow, how, how did you just do that, Evan? How did you just get 14 in a row? So, yeah, that was one of, I mean, being able to do that and still have a satisfying term because as play testers, we see the old stuff. And then when he changes it, we're just kind of like, eh, which, again, the thing that Scott is happy <laughs> about. <laughs> We, we see that and it kind of stays in your mind. So for Vital to balance the chain so that, you know, Evan, who just did 14 in a row, the next play <laughs> test is restricted to one to three and good he job, still enjoys it and finds that fun, I think is a, is a really good sign that Vital did a good job with that. I mean, he actually had two changes since then, the thing that Scott doesn't like and then the sharing. <laughs> Man, oh. I can't wait till the question comes up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. edge of my seat. Oh, man, these questions. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> now, Scott, did you have anything to add to the the challenge besides the one that you're not talking about yet? Uh, yeah, there is something else actually. The um, for the longest time, Vital was insistent that you moved ahead in eras, and oh. I kept on pushing <laughs> against that. Saying, look, there are. Um, societies around the world today that are not um, as uh, technologically advanced right. as others. And um, yeah, so I, I, I kept on pushing that, no, it should be okay to stay in era one for the entire game if you want to. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that right. took a a fair bit of persuading. <laughs> that that was months in that was months in development of Scott like sending me DMs. Why does Vital not understand that there's <laughs> older societies that have no internet? And then it like everything it balanced out. He hmm. he came around to Scott's thinking and like how it worked, and then added in his twist. Okay, well if you're gonna yeah. stay behind. If you go visit a more advanced society, they're going to get a tiny benefit because you're That's learning cool. more advanced knowledge. So he always, right. I love that he just, he makes that connection of, okay, Scott, you can stay in the Stone Age all you want, but Shelly's <laughs> up here in neoclassic, so she's going to get a benefit when you come learn from her. Yeah, and you have disadvantage of being behind, right? Be behind time, of course, societies have disadvantages against the societies that are more advanced. Right. So, Right now in the game, and because of God, you can stay there. <laughs> because of Scott. <laughs> but, well, it makes sense. Uh, I finally yeah. understand, <laughs> and then it makes sense. Uh, but uh, it was a challenge to, to mm. allow to do that in the game, right? Because right. players should advance on errors every time. But right. uh, now the game works with that bit of... It, it makes it much more automatically. I agree mm. with it. But it was a big challenge to... to to design the game in a way right. that that would be possible, and at the same time, the player who gets behind loses something against the right. players that mm -hmm. are ahead. So it was another bit of another layer that we have to design on the game that I was not expecting until until Scott told me <laughs> to, told me that. But yeah, so it, anyway, that's why they are there, right? So. Right. Oh, well, and your games are very thematic. That's one reason why I like it because it's not only like a Euro style game. Like they're very, they're very thematic. I love On Mars. Our, On Mars is my favorite. This and I feel like everything you do makes the, like sense thematically. And even with, you know, inventions, like progressing in the, the certain eras, like Scott was talking about, like some people aren't as progressed as others and so it's really cool that you added that into it even though it was a challenge i, I try to do them as thematic as i can mm -hmm. but sometimes we have to streamline a little bit because it's mm. still a hero game right so you right. are playing a hero game uh, right. you are not playing an ameri type game that is only thematic and you just roll dice and get oh, i hate luck like based games anyway uh, <laughs> but uh, yes you have to cut this off <laughs> and, <laughs> Well, <laughs> you don't really have dice rolling in your in your I, games. I, I don't know how to deal with dice. And one of my favorite designers ever is Stefan Feltz, and he, uh -huh. he, he's really a genius by with using dice. So, but I, I don't know how to deal with it. I prefer to deal with a deck of cards because it's more more 
I don't know, approachable for me. So, yeah. But well, House of Fado. I don't use dice anyway. Sorry? House of Fado has dice, doesn't it? Uh, just as a markers. So Prototype. The counters, yeah. Just as Prototype. Counters. Oh, if you take them out. No. You have to no, 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 no. Are they going to stay? <laughs> they are still in the game, They're but stay, just okay. you use them as a counters. So that, yeah, you don't they, actually they roll them. show the value of the, the singers and the, the musicians. You don't roll them. So we don't roll if them. you roll them, I have an art attack. So I have... <laughs> right. You can't roll singers. That's weird. No, yeah. you can't roll. You, you shouldn't roll dice. The, the dice should be something that you couldn't roll. It, it's, well, it doesn't matter. I, 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 I can't, right. Dice he just doesn't like, like that. But, yeah. but you play games. Well, anyway, you... Uh, yeah. going to the to the previous thing <laughs> that was what is interesting. <laughs> it's just like yeah, I, I try to make it thematically as possible, but sometimes you have to in line and it's still an arrow game. So um, you you have to be able to play the game, right? It's just not the team right. that matters. What were you gonna I say, can Shelley? tell you once. Uh, I can tell you once a game. There's a question that comes up, and Vitaly's like, "I just don't know how to solve this right now. I need to mm. sleep on it." And one of us, uh, we're like, so sarcastic. We're like, "Well, what if we added a die and we rolled that, and that was a mobster's strength when they came?" <laughs> There's always like that joking with them. We always are trying to push it. What if we added dice to this one, Vital? <laughs> I, I usually uh, hang out from Discord when they say that. <laughs> I'm not in Discord anymore. No, I'm oh, kidding. I, I just don't know how to deal with this. Maybe one day. I don't know. Maybe one day. But it's okay. Usually dice bring luck into it, and I don't like luck. Yeah, yeah. And people just have, have fun with it. So, yeah. If I'm going to be bad at a game, let me be bad by myself and not let dice like help me along being bad. That's what I think about. <laughs> Just because I don't know how to deal with that. So, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so the next uh, question is, let me make sure. Okay. How long was the design process and the main, and then the main idea slash skeleton of the game versus testing and balancing? And this was from Eva Habel on Instagram. I don't know. Uh, I, those Shelly knows that better than me. We start playtesting, I don't know, 2000 and... She's I'm looking, looking at my notes. Yeah, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> August 7th, 2021, and the last playtest, the last, last playtest, and not the test where Vital said the game is done and we tested for two more months, was January 2023. <laughs> it was a so blind playtest. Two play years, test. right? From 2021 I, I had, to 2023, yeah. I had the base then before we we place it here on on uh, Discord, and before yes. we start playtesting, yeah. it's for like six months before. I don't know. It it takes around two three years to design a game. It's mostly that time. Um, the longest process is always playtesting, of course, mm -hmm. and. Randall usually say to me, Randall is the CEO of Eagle Griffin, usually says to me, you can give me the, I play the game today, but it does not matter because when the final version will be there, it will be a different one. So we can sell two <laughs> games. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, it takes a long time um, from the beginning to the end, but it's a fun process, at least to me. Uh, I really like to do it. So, yeah. Now, Vital, do you actually create a, like, prototype for yourself or is it all on tabletopia for the design no no process? i do i do physical prototypes because i have a lot of groups in portugal where i play tested okay, and nice. basically because um they, they they are two very distinguished things you know there are very distinct things one is when you can make adjustments really fast and easy because mm -hmm. it's tabletopia i just change the image and place it there change the board and place it there and play test on the next day so we can play test a lot. And the other one is when you have to print all the 500 pieces and play test with your friends. Because what you're seeing there is not the changes that you want to do on the board, but how people react live mm. to mm. the game you designed. Okay. So there are two ways to play test the things. And live is very important one because it, you we play board games live, right? We don't play right. on tabletop. We also play on tabletop here. But the game, the purpose of the game of the board game is to play uh, with people, right? And with if people you have them, 
So, and uh, to, to see lies and to have, so that's why I have to play. Um, of course, we have to play live. Uh, so I play my, I, this, uh, I build my own prototypes in the lift here. So oh. <laughs> that's my bench to build the prototype. So I build them by hand and I cut with a knife uh, 500 pieces to do one. Uh, it it wow. takes me one day. It's okay. <laughs> Just one day. <laughs> it's your job though. It's my job, though. Yeah. So you can cut those um, 500 pieces. I can. I can. It's easy for me because I, 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 my background is from advertising. I used to make the prototype. So, yeah. It's, it's something that I enjoy because it's... Um, uh, I can meditate, you know, because I'm alone all the day. I have all the, the, the things disconnected from the internet. I'm just me, myself, and the cardboard. So, yeah. I enjoy to do that. Uh, I, of course, I cannot do these uh, 10 prototypes because it's almost impossible. But yeah. uh, the purpose of playtesting live is very different from the purpose of playtesting on Tabletopia. Yeah, that's what I feel. Um, one thing is mostly to see the people's reactions, how I can play with my uh, friends and playtesters that I have in different groups in Portugal. Yeah, and the way they seem to look at the people to see how uh, they feel the game. And here we don't see each other. We are just talking and talk about team and mechanisms and the way the game should work. It's very different, right? So. Well, that's what the, the community wanted. We could talk about the game and play it if you want, but you have to fly us out there. <laughs> yeah, you have to play it. <laughs> have to play Maybe it. one day. <laughs> now, Shelly and Scott, once a got to the point of Tabletopia. Um, what did you think of like the process and how long it took? Um, was it long for you or did it seem too short? <sighs> it was kind part of, of the both. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of both. It's, um, yeah, it, it takes a very long time. And um, as Shelley said earlier, the there's, uh, several play tests a week um and i i tried to play once each week um but i will sit in and listen and watch on all of the other play tests um and yeah they can be four five six hours each session so it, it's a lot of time and it takes months and months and um yeah but then at the end, it feels like we could do with another month of playtesting <laughs> to sort of tweak these little little yeah. bits at the end. And yeah, so it, it is a bit of both of it. It feels really long, but it also doesn't feel like enough time. Mm. Yeah, it right. it feels long. But then when Vital's like, OK, guys, I'm happy. I'm sleeping at night. I'm happy with this going into the wild. And you're just like. Has, and I started recording on the tester spreadsheets. I've started recording the, the very first play test we do online and then closing out with like the final blind play test he does. Um, because I don't think a lot of people realize that we're not just play testing the design itself and the mechanics and the theme. Ian comes in at a certain point near the end as well. And he takes away the Vital art that I know some of the community loves so much and brings in his graphic design and his illustrations and Vital has us very involved in that process of well of what do you think of these icons do you understand them does it make sense and not only is he doing those testers having the testers who've been there since the beginning review them it's good he's also getting blind testers to do that as well because we know the game so well we can look at it and be like yeah it looks fine to me right and then right. someone else will come in that's never played it before and they'll look at like the light bulb for sharing inventions and be like I don't understand what you're like, what is this? I don't understand. So he's really, we probably, would you say probably about a month, month and a half, Scott, that we looked at Ian's, like so many revisions went back and forth on Ian's graphics. Yeah. Because we were just trying right. to. Yeah. yeah. I remember that, the that first is... vision of it, it. The board was just all pink. I felt like it was pink <laughs> everywhere <laughs> with chains and yeah. chains and like the, the graphic icons and inventions I feel are so much more streamlined than they were in the beginning. Oh, for sure. That is another part of the game design with when Ian saw the, the illustrator, mm -hmm. but mostly Ian on these games. 
uh, enters on the process. Uh, half of the playtesting is already done, at least 90% of the game probably is done, because the 10% have that is uh, that. Uh, wait, give me a minute. Thank you. <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome. The water for me, it's too hot. It was magic. It's like You're a magician. I know. I didn't know you were a magician <laughs> and a saxophone player. Uh, Paul, man, this is amazing. It's my son, Alex. Um, I was saying that when it comes in the game, the game is like 19% done. And um, we start to play testing the game basically with a white sheet, just with iconography on the board to make sure right. that the players understand iconography. And that is another struggle then. Then we are not just designed, uh, 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 we're not discussing game design, we are discussing why I don't understand this iconography or why this is not a good, uh, good okay. fit here or these actions shouldn't be there and should be in the other place. So, and that is the difficult work that uh, Ian have to do with us. So, and yeah. Is and that the I thing on the back? Think... On the back of the board? Sorry? It's like on the back of the inventions. Oh, the, the back prototype. of the board is just creative uh, freedom. He does whatever oh. you want. Well, I didn't know if that was so... like, I can't remember. No, no, oh, like... no. He usually yeah. places our signatures and uh, yeah. Stuff, yeah. Stuff. yeah. That's true, there's a head. Stuff on the board. Um, but um, and then I, I work directly with with Ian. Uh, it, it's not easy because it's in Australia, and um, the, the 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 time to to reach him uh, live right. is more difficult for me because Australian. Uh, well, with Scott is okay because it's England. We have the same mm. uh, time zone. But with Shelly, with Randall, with you, with uh, uh, Ian, at the same time, it's like twenty four hours difference. Yeah. And I'm in the middle, you know. So hours. and yeah. Um, working with um, Ian like that is we. I have to find some uh, timings to do that, and we work directly until the process is completely done. Um, and then he does the illustration after that. So well, I look the I'm... illustrations and the art for the game is the last thing he does. I don't interfere with that. Of course, I, I give my opinion. I say to him what I want, what is my idea. Otherwise, he cannot work with it. Right. And then we just do this beautiful work that you can see in this board. Mm. So, yeah. And I look forward yeah. to talking more about Ian and the coming questions. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of fun to I see the board game so come sorry, to life. It, no, he it's did a, a lot of job. fun to see it come to life. Like I'm Scott can sure. agree with me. When, when Vital says it's just a white sheet of a board, it's a white sheet with the icons and you can see kind of what's going through right. Ian's mind because it's a sketch. It's basically right. the draft lines of all the art. So watching inventions and weather machine, like his two kind of big boxes I've worked on come to evolve. life, like, yeah, evolve each week. Vital is updating the files and we're all like, Ooh, ah, you know, we're like looking over the board. It's, it's a really exciting process to be able to see that come through a lot of designers you just get a basic, this is a prototype, mm -hmm. here's what you're testing on, and you wait for it to be published like everybody else. And this is Yeah, a it's a cool time by watching, even uh, all, all the people who play testing the game with me, it's cool mm -hmm. that they, they can see this process, process happening, and they are the first ones to see how the game will become in the future, or for, right. for the players to do, and I think they like that, and I like to, at least as a Thank you. Uh, thank you from my side to show them uh, in first hand. Okay. Yeah. No, that's great. The the process of bringing your the followers along and the developers and being able to see just how it goes is really cool. I mean, I remember seeing doing the blind test, but I also kind of just watched you guys and being able to see. I think the phase right before this board was introduced and then just the transition of now what it looks like was really cool. And that was, you know, already, I don't know, 500 play tests in or whatever. And so I don't even remember, I don't know what it looked like, but now I get to see speakeasy, but I, I didn't get to see, you know, the, the beginning of invention. And so being able mm -hmm. to now see the process, you know, here and there of speakeasy, I get a little, you know, taste test of what you guys get to experience and it's great. <laughs> Now, speaking of uh, testing, how many playtesters were on this game? Do you guys know? There were 85 online playtesters, like give or take, because sometimes, like Vitell said, he tests in Porto, he tests right. with his game group, he takes it to GridCon, 
and he tests it live to make sure all the mechanics that we're easily doing through Tabletopia work. Like there are times he comes back and he's like, guys, I had to change this because I've done these tests this weekend and this just isn't working mechanically or being mm -hmm. able to do it well on the table. And so sometimes he'll give me the names of those people, but online there's like 85 plus play testers and like 115 online play tests. Okay. And that doesn't count all, like all the extra that Vital does live with people in person. That that is the cool thing of being able to play tests online, right? We can have play tests from all over the world, and right. it's very different to see players that belong to different countries and different regions to play together because everybody thinks in a very different way. It's a cultural yeah. thing, you know, because uh, a German a German player thinks in a very different way from an American player. Exactly. And if you play both in the game in the in the same table. Well, you know that, right? <laughs> because you, you live there. And now in both places, America. yes. And yes. Usually, it's totally all, different. All example, usually German players like to play by themselves. They have their world and like to almost... They're solitaire. Play. I don't want to interfere in my game. I right. just my seat. While American, uh, the American players just like Brutal. to beat everybody and spread the world. And uh, so... And <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> how many how different players can right. do the same game. And even being on the same table is even more fun for me to watch because right. uh, the game goes to completely different directions. Yeah. I didn't think about the difference between the playtesting online that it wouldn't work in person. So that was interesting that you said that, Shelley. Yeah, there's just certain, I know that sometimes Vital will come back and just be like, I played this in person and Tabletopia is kind of easing and making this easy. Like right mm -hmm. now on Speakeasy, there's a certain phase that happens. And I joked about it, I think on Saturday when I was switching, I was bringing mobsters in to take over districts in Manhattan. And I joked and I said, Vital tells me this is really easy at the table because there's just, and it, yeah. I can see how at the table it's much quicker than it is on Tabletopia because you're picking up and placing That's true. each thing. Whereas at the table, you can easily grab several components at one time. Mm, that makes sense. And everyone's kind of, you know, pitching in. We have hands, right? Yeah, we have hands <laughs> at the table versus a mouse. I can see Scott's. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's time. Scott's hands. <laughs> <laughs> now, Shelly, the next question is for you. I know mm. you've been waiting for this question. Um, <clears throat> can the game be classified uh. <laughs> as a peaceful civilization game where we have evolutions instead of revolutions? And will it start such a trend? This was from Cat in <laughs> Board Game Box on Instagram and Discord. Yeah. So is this a civilization game? A civilization game. There's the forms of politics. <laughs> But that was over with this smoke. He's like Shelly sarcasm. I just I don't like I it. I love it. At all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vital Vital is is a designer who doesn't like war, and he doesn't he doesn't love war. But as he said earlier in in the in the video, like in the stream, he does enjoy that aspect of evolution and technologies and growing of societies. So I, I think it was a good challenge for him with this game to be able to do something similar to a civilization mm. game without the the four wow. the typical four X's and still right. being enjoyable and feel like I'm growing my society. Like right. I'm there from the beginning to the end of the design. And while sometimes the theme falls a little bit further in the mm. back of my mind because I'm focusing so much on the mechanics with the this one, when I sit down at the end of it and think, yes, I feel he accomplished this. I'm, I'm presenting these ideas. People are helping me invent them and share them with the world. I'm looking at my society board at the end of the game and like the thing Scott commented on earlier with, you know, that puzzle of, of progressing my society and advancing it. He did a really good job with the three different specialties of progress where this is my cultural, this is my tech, and this is my economy. And when you trigger those various things or get those benefits, it really feels civilization-like. In that, right. in that respect. Do but you feel the same, But it's not a civilization Scott? game. But it's not, it's a, not civilization a civilization game. game. <laughs> it's, missing, yeah. it's missing the four X's. And I think Scott would agree with me that he kind of gets that similar feel as well. Yeah, definitely. It's it's looking at a, a different part of the progress of civilizations. Mm -hmm. And it, that 
that theme definitely comes through. So, yes, it uh, has the theme of civilization, but it's not a Civ game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's good just, to know. All I of feel you. like my you own little people. society, like, I feel like my own little society, and I'm just like, this game, what technological advancements do I want? What cultural benefits do I want? Do I want to right. be able to move more than a couple of citizens to travel around the world? Do I want a bonus of being able to gain my influence over a region more easily? Um, and that's kind of a, a really good thing about the progress tiles is, like with a lot of Vital's games, you're like, oh, I can't do this. And then Vital will toss in this little, oh, here's a rule breaker. And it's just your society board is just, I know I developed on it, but I just really love how he grew that over the time we were testing and the feel of that. I say that a lot with him with my play testing feedback. I'm like, he's like, Shelly, I don't understand why you don't like that. I'm like, I just don't like how it feels. It just it doesn't feel good. And he has to kind of extract from that and, and fix it. <laughs> Looks like a good game. Yeah. <laughs> After I hear people saying about it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, it's I don't a, have it's anything to game. say about that. So. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> no, not yet. Yeah, Once I'm it gets sure in people's hands. Some feedback from many people who play the game. So yeah. But they have to play it enough to actually give their voice, not just once. Yes. Yeah, mm. Vital's but, games are definitely a journey. They're they're definitely right. a journey. I I do have people in my gaming groups that I probably wouldn't present a Vital game to them because they're the people that want to. They read the rules. And two turns in, if they don't understand the game, they're just kind of like, this is a horrible game. Because they want to know right away. Whereas I'm right. just like, I sit down, I play a game, a heavy girl for the first time. And I'm like, what does this do? What does this do? This looks fun. Let right. me try this and push this button and right. pull that lever. And I love right. that the more I play Vital's games, the more they open up the possibilities and the story that he's had in right. his mind as he's developed and designed right. it. I feel like I'm in a movie, but without like TV on, yeah. like with on Mars, I feel like I am on the moon and I have to make these decisions. Like it is so cool how you have, like you get into the game. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I love on Mars. <laughs> well, I keep mentioning it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a, never mind. I won't say that. Anyway, the next uh, question is, <laughs> is how heavy is Inventions compared to other Lacerda games? This is Bye, a Scott question. Scott is really good at answering these. I am not good because after 15 hours a week of watching playtests, they just they seem so family game to me. <laughs> now, have you guys, have both you, Scott and Shelly, played all of the tall games, or what are you comparing it to? Uh, yes, I, I have played all of Vitel's games. Um, the, yeah, as, as Shelly said, because we playtest so much, it becomes really difficult to actually judge where his games sit. Um... <sighs> <laughs> if I had to pick, if I had to put it somewhere, I'd say it's about in the middle. Um, yeah. So, and and I think the other thing that makes it difficult is when you ask different people, they will right, say that yeah. different of Vito's games are heavy for them and others are light. And I, th I think it's a lot to do with how, how much you engage with the theme and mm, yes. um, mm -hmm. because yeah, the, the, the theme and the mechanics are so tightly integrated in these right. games. Um, so yeah, for me, uh, Lisboa on Mars and there's another one. Uh, Weather machine. Weather machine, yes. Those are <laughs> those are the the three at the top, and then I'd put inventions below those, and then okay, um, yeah, the rest are all below inventions. Um, yeah, I find inventions more transparent than Lisboa <laughs> on Mars and Weather Machine. Like more, tra like I looked at the I look at the board, I look at those core actions of Vital keeps mentioning, saying, okay, there's kind of not so much a loop, but kind of like I present someone invents it or I invent it, someone may right. innovate it, and then I share it, and I just kind of grow from there. I can see my path, much like Kanban. Right. You can look at the board, and you can look down through the departments and see kind of the direction you need to go to get to the end point of what right. you want to do. 
And that's why I would agree with Scott and put it more middle of the road for me, like mid mid weight in terms of things. And I'm basing that purely off of I can kind of see what I have to do. Whereas with it, Lisboa on Mars and Weather Machine, you're kind of like, I need to play this a couple of times, you know, to kind of figure out what right. my direction is. But I also agree with engaging with the theme. I, I too. think I think they are all at the same level. They are quite no, all of them. no. <laughs> in, in Escape one, plan. Just, in the, yeah, in this one you have to just place a card in the board, uh, flip the card that is the invention, and then share it to the world and move your meeples to the map. That's it. That's what you have to no, do. No, 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 no. But there's the chain actions. Easy. No, well, you're the designer. You don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> beside, beside those three actions, all the rest are distractions. So... All the rest are distractions. But you need those in order to do those three. Well, what is it? If you cannot do those with the main action, yeah, you have to find ways. But that's the core of the game. That's quite simple. I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious here. <laughs> I don't think that I'm Scott really and I call those distractions. You just have to, to have in your mind that you have to play a card in the board, to flip the card that is the invention, and then share the card with the world. That's it. So if you Simple. do this well, you probably will do well in the game. That's it. So yeah. I, I don't it. think Scott and <laughs> so I call them distractions. I mean, Scott and I even joke at times during playtesting, and I'll send a DM and I'll say, that's a trap. And Scott will come back, yup. That's true. Because Vital likes to put Those these are traps, in his... right. I like yeah. to put traps in my game. You like uh, to but... put traps in. Like you want to play the player like, oh, that looks so good. And they'll kind of go into that direction and then be like, oh, no. Wow. That looks really good for points. And now I'm kind of seeing my, the error of my ways. <laughs> oh, man. Now, can you invent board games and inventions? Yeah, you can thank Randall for that. So because you have you come <laughs> up you, with the idea of one card that is the first board game ever invented, I think it's I, yeah. I, I can't remember the name. It's Senate. Um Senate, oh, right? So right. yeah. Senate is in the one of the promotion cards. So you just hit basically hey. one of the cards yeah. in the game and you can invent board games and inventions. So, it awesome. unlocked yesterday during the campaign. Whoop whoop. Yeah. So I'm it was the first so yesterday. Game. When actually this goes live, yesterday will be like oh, a week ago. Oh, yeah, yesterday would have been a week. Yeah, it'll be a week ago when this goes live. We're doing this a week launch. in advance. Yeah. <laughs> the launch of the Kickstarter, the first day that promo got unlocked for board yes. games. Yeah, it was really hard to get all of us together, so we had to pre-record this. Um, but we will be there, or at least yeah. I will be there when this is live. So the, the next the Canadian question... sacrifice getting up early for the the European. No, it was the tall. It was all the tall. <laughs> hey, I'm American. I was flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, tall. Okay, so what is the one thing you sorely miss from the finished product, which had to be cut? Due to cost, balance, or game time challenges. Is this where we get to hear from Scott? Scott! Yeah, it that is, is, yes. <laughs> that is Scott. Um, yeah. Most uh, so, yeah, chain actions have been mentioned. Um, and the idea cards um, on their idea side, they used to have a chain action. So when okay. you went to invent them, you could then chain off of that. Um, and, yeah. Vito removed it very near the end of development. And oh. I, yeah, I really liked having that ability on there to, to go to invent something and then do other things off of that. You can still do that in a different way, but yeah, right. it was, it was, it was a part of the game that I really enjoyed and yeah, Vito took it away from me. I'm it sorry, added, it, it, him. it added Very a lot sorry, of depth Scott. to the game, but it also added a lot of AP yeah. for some of the, cause it's just yeah, like, but yeah. oh, admit I can that the, chain, chain. Yeah. The game improved a little bit, right? So mm -hmm. it's. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny because. Even, even, even against Scott, I would say that the game improved a lot because the amount of information that you have in the board just was reduced. And so yeah. play, the downtime of the game just went down a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I know that is for the players who played like 20 games of those, of the inventions, probably they would all like to have that, um, that uh, action there available. But for the players that will not play 20 times a game, 
will be <laughs> overwhelmed for sure. It was. Uh, and yeah. you complained about the amount of information that we have on the board <laughs> yes, a lot of Yes, time, I did. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah the, the I, I do understand. He compromised yeah. for you, Scott. He added a bunch yeah. of chains on progress tiles for invent. That was <laughs> maybe, a compromise. Maybe Randall wants to make a, a deck promo of cards. Yeah, with promo the, deck. With the previous yeah. Well, Scott, I can tell you about promo a, cards. yeah about a week well, after Vital removed it. Like twenty-eight cards, I think it's twenty-one cards, probably. Twenty, yeah. <laughs> it like a week after you removed it, Scott sent me a DM and said. Hey, I know you have access to Vitale's Dropbox for assets. Are those cards still there? <laughs> oh. And I went and took a peek. I was like, I'm sorry. He's already deleted the folder. No. <laughs> I You're think gone. I have good five, Scott. <laughs> I, I Scott said, if you, yeah. I was like, the file. I have no access to the file anymore. You should have asked me like a week ago. Might have still been there. Well, Ian, it was another one that didn't like it because the art on the cards mm. was, was was already done, and mm. he had to change it because of that space that we didn't use anymore. So, but yeah, he find a nice solution mm. to, rather quick. Yeah, it, it, oh. I think the the art of the game is quite amazing. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of Ian, how did the Vital Ian relationship start? Oh, really? I I told this story so many times. It is well, it you know, I don't listen to any of your other I things, know. so this well, is just for me. No questions <laughs> anyway, so. um, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it has a story. Um, I was trying to work with Ego Griffin Games many years ago, 2013, probably. Yeah. And I was trying that they accept my the gallerist. Um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, the, the team, but that time was very small. It was just like Rick, Randall, and one or two players. And I have a heavy game. Uh, so, and Rick right. said, no, we cannot do heavy games because we don't have enough uh, playtesting and a bigger team mm -hmm. to playtest your game and make it done. Uh, make it done. And I said, don't worry, I do all the game and you have just to produce it. And um, I don't know why I said that because I didn't have any editors, I didn't have any artists, I didn't have anyone to work with me, I just said it. And um, Rick says, okay, just send me <laughs> And, oh, well, and oh, man. for, I don't know, you know when all the stars aligned, so and that happens. Um, Paul Grogan at the time was the one who made the edition of the rule book, uh, said to me, I'm leaving my work, I want to work on this, on this thing. And I said, okay, I have a rule book for you to make. I don't have any wow. money, but do you want to make it with me? And right. said yes. And then I received an email, why, I don't know why, from Ian saying, I want to work in the industry. I would like to make a game with you. And this happens wow. at all at the same time. And we made uh, the amazing. gallerist, like uh, the art of the gallerist and the edition of the rule book, like in 15 days. Now right. it only takes wow. one year to make this. So. <laughs> and we make it. And we well, it's, it it's just keeps going. Another part of the story that I like a lot, because probably is what pushed me to make more games. It's um, uh, the gallerist has a lot of artwork. Uh, original mm. artwork inside because of the paintings and the photographs and all the art. Right. There. And I, Rick just said to me that he doesn't have any money, just like 5,000 euros or something. And I went to the, the royalty pictures, uh, the image banks, and only two or three pictures cost me that amount. And I said, wow. I, I need more than 20 or more than 30 to place in the game. How can I do this? So right. I ran over the um, forums about culture and about painting, the amateur forums, and asked people for uh, art. And I said, That's okay, amazing. I can send you a game in exchange. I, I will right. place your art in the tile, and you'll be, wow. happy. You'll be happy, and I send you a game in return. Uh, so yes. I did it, and I received a lot of art to place in the game, and it was That's amazing. free, you know? And um, I... I, I, I one of the pages on the rule book has the names of everybody that sent the art there. Awesome. So you have in the gallery's amateur art that is original. There isn't anywhere in the world. And wow. well, we made the game and I met Ian on that time. It was just a coincidence. Wow. And we made the first game to Eagle Griffin Games. 
Yeah. And then we wow. didn't stop anymore. <laughs> and it's evolved. Yeah, and it keeps evolving into it inventions, which is about ideas and yeah, well, awesome. Yeah, it's now, a nice story for me. It's something that I will keep for my life, you know? Yeah. Right. Now, with Weather Machine, I know that it was based, or I heard that it was about a song that was by Katy Perry, I think. Um, I think that's correct. I, I could be totally wrong. Now, um, you are wrong. Are there any? I am wrong. What's the song? Like the weather? No, like, the song it is. It was like hidden. It, it has a hidden song. Yes, yes. Right. And so is there anything hidden? That's where I'm going. I, it could be totally wrong oh, with Katy yeah. Perry. But is there any, like, are there any hidden Easter eggs, like hidden meaning, meanings on the board game that Ian added? Inventions. Yeah. Uh, um, Inventions. I, I asked Ian the other day about that, and that is this answer. He said, mm, I'm not sure if I did. Usually I forget about them. So <laughs> I don't know the answer. Uh, They're hidden. I didn't find anything there, so we probably didn't do it in these boards. I don't know. Uh, I haven't noticed machine, anything. The other machine, yes, has a lot of stuff that is um, hidden. Uh, like butterfly effects. Yeah. Uh, uh, Easter eggs. It has all the, right. the boards from uh, that we made together for uh, Eagle Griffin Games. It has some reference to the uh, Ghibli studios there. So it has a lot of hidden eggs there. This one, hmm. it didn't told Don't me. Don't know. So probably we it's have hidden. to find something. <laughs> one thing that I noticed is that um, the map, and this is very nice art. I don't know if many people notice, is that the map is divided in different regions. I cannot say mm -hmm. that they are the, the, the continents because they aren't, but there are different regions. And each region has um, um, uh, a map loop uh, of what this do no it's a glass that amplifies mm -hmm. the region it's um magnifying, magnifying, glass. magnifying. magnifying glass yeah. yeah and each glass has a pattern around if you know right that i is, did what is that that is related with that culture the culture on that oh thing. that's cool that is very cool for me that is that a is cool. easter egg that yeah, no, that's things, awesome. But, but yeah, all of them are different, if you notice. So right. That is very cool to see. Yeah. I'm just happy cool. there's no coffee stain on the board or cracks that when my, my group gets together, they're like, someone spilled coffee on your board. Or they're rubbing at the crack on Rosabella. Like, your board is your board is torn. What's, you know, the it's, it's a pretty clean board as far as Ian goes, I think, for as far as your games go, he usually has something on there that players just kind of ping like the coffee stain on escape play and the cracks in Lisboa. He's, he's very good at kind of going all in on the theme when it comes and making it thematic. This one is probably my favorite board compared to Lisboa, like between this and Lisboa, they're my favorite. They're just gorgeous. The colors mm -hmm. and yeah. So this kind of goes on the second question, the next one with Ian. Um, what what was it like working with Ian on this game, the process and everything for all of you with Ian? Well, that is tough. <laughs> Since uh, it takes like two years or 20 years, like you said. Well, Ian is a leprechaun, right? <laughs> so it's not easy to work with leprechauns. Isn't that Irish? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he's from Ireland. <laughs> I, he's kidding. in Australia. But... Is that why you said it? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's not hard. He followed the rainbow. Yeah, it's not hard to, to work with Ian at all. It just do their stuff. I give him a lot of freedom. We work together by I explain what I want. He gives me their ideas. One of the good things with Ian is that he play tests the games also and he feels how the game plays before he starts working on them. Um, and um, uh, when we have changes to do, he do it. The only problem for me is that because he's now very famous and everybody wants to work with him, he has less time to make things. So um, I, I'm eager to see the solutions and sometimes they take some time. Uh, but that's the only problem that I have with him right now. But it's because... He's famous. That's because <laughs> it's, well, we have to do, right? Because he has a lot of work. Of course. And, of uh, course. Um, it's uh, delightful to, to work with him and his work is always beautiful. Um, I, I don't it even give, say it's very rare when I say I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, hard with the iconography 
because we discussed the iconography of right. what he, I make him change the iconography as any times he have to do. But when we can, we, when it comes to the arts, is from is is uh, he, he does their own choices. So it's. Uh, but. completely creation treatment because well we have the results i cannot say anything of course right? it's gorgeous oh so, yeah it's a masterpiece well that's really cool because it's really hard to get in touch with ian so you know <laughs> it's hard to get it, yeah <laughs> it's hard to get it. but it's all you're always available i'm well more than less i usually <laughs> book him i usually book him with one year ahead and i yeah. say okay next year in september we can start working on this game so i, I also That's have awesome. some some uh, uh timeline for me and some uh, right final uh time to do that but uh usually i need to hook him in a one year behind yeah when he right. makes sense but he knows like you keep creating games like you have a big box and then you have now you have yeah he does not like, like to make the, the, the small box games he likes to make the big ones but maybe, but you look maybe I can convince him to make uh, small box games next year. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm trying. Maybe fingers crossed. Yeah. I'm trying. Now the last question that we have um, is kind of like a sales pitch, um, and it's what existing games are the closest to inventions apart from your own, and why should we buy inventions or why should we back inventions instead of the other ones? Um, and this was, I don't know how to say his Discord name. I think this was on Discord, uh, Vitals. Uh, this, the, the, I don't know. This, uh, but this, yeah. This? Okay. yeah, but if you had to explain inventions in terms of three other games, what would they be? But really, so, the sales pitch. Yeah, I can, is... I can answer this really fast. What existing games are closest to inventions? None. <laughs> okay. And why should we buy inventions instead of those? Because it's awesome. So that's... <laughs> I don't have much to say. So Kelly, maybe, and Scott, you like to say something about the game? <laughs> you know, there's no reason for anybody to buy, you know, back inventions, game developers. I, I said one. <laughs> but you're the designer. So I'm no saying games like this yeah. one. Oh. Yeah, when I when I saw this question, I I tried to think about what what games are closest to it and i i actually can't think of any <laughs> it, it is yeah. very different to um it, even to any of vito's own games it's quite different and it's yeah there, there's i don't have anything in my collection and i haven't played anything that is um Maybe CO2 has a free time thing that you go for the, the idea, invention, and sharing in CO2. We have also, yes, uh, you place the project, then you place the installation, and finally build um, the, the power plant. So, yeah, that, maybe this process similar. is a little bit close yeah. with that because it's um, a sharing process of uh, uh, things, but. I don't see any connection with other of my games or even with that any other games. Great. Probably there are games with chain actions that you can see. Uh, but the chain actions and the way you block yourself and look for the new actions, the team itself that makes the game feel, I think, alive uh, and join, very enjoyable to play. Those are the reasons because those are the reasons because it's a big challenge for you if you like my type of game. So yeah, I think it's a fun one. I, I really like inventions. It's That's one good because you designed favorites. it. Yeah, yeah but uh, I have favorites also. But so yeah, and what are they? One of my favorites. I cannot tell. <laughs> it's like they I can't tell change. what your favorite kid is. Like, I have four yeah, kids, but I'm not going to say who's my favorite. Change, change. Probably, the I don't know, Lisboa one time, Mars on Mars on time, Ben Ben. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's your children, your, your game they children. They are changing, depends on the number of times I play them. And if my friends say, okay, let's play Lisboa today. So Lisboa is my favorite today, tonight. So mm. it's, yeah. Uh, and Inventions is one of my favorites for sure. I won't play the game many times because it's a real challenge and it's the way my head works around. I really like my uh, to find the ways to do what I want and 
make them better than the other players, it's a challenge for me. So, yeah, it's cool. That's now, do you guys, do you have way. anything to say, like any last words to say to the potential backers or backers already of Inventions Wishes, still live on Kickstarter, I think, till July 9th. I'm not for sure. Just any last words? Last words? <laughs> Last word. Not You're not gonna die, but like <laughs> last things before the oh my goodness, but before this stream is ended, uh, anything that you want to say to your audience who is hopefully watching this hour and 19 minutes uh, stream, anything you want to say oh, to them? That's a big stream. Um, uh, I hope you reach this point of, <laughs> and hope you had fun watching this stream. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think. I will say that if you back this game, you'll not be, um, you will not repent because the game is really fun. It's a good one. I'm sure you will like if you like my other games. Mm. Uh, it's a different one from the other games. And also, um, if you don't like, I'm sure you can get the same money as you spent. <laughs> so <laughs> you can sell it anyway. Uh, That's true. But uh, yeah, I I'm sure it, is, it will be a good game for you to have fun for a long time. Okay, just played it more than once. Just see. yes, <laughs> uh, like three times because the first couple of times you actually have to understand the rules. Well, after the first game, you are okay with it. So. If you're the tall, it's the game, you already get it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Scott like Shelley, said, the game is quite simple, right? It's just play a card, flip the card, and shake. <laughs> That's it. You have to have that in mind. That's what you, you heard have it. To do in the game. It's simple. Yeah. <laughs> Family game. First, let's have a sort of family game. Well, a I'm going to get my eight year old. Let's play it. Well, no, not well, there are it's There not... are some. Some people in Vital Discord will come in and say, My eight year old just beat me at On let's Mars. Play your games, you know, yeah. Mars or Maybe Canada I should try or, it then. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there are some young kids that will play Vital, like eight, ten years old, and they'll come in and say, I'm playing this with my 10 year old. We started out with Bot Factory. Now he's kicking my butt right. at Kanban. Yeah, my, my yeah. 10 year old loves Bot Factory. Yeah. The, the I, only it, problem for the kids is not that the game is difficult for them, it's that the, they don't have a, a, a big span depth. of uh, concentration, right? So right. They, they just go around. Uh, because they cannot stand three hours playing the same game. But if the, hour, the, if the game with the same depth or same difficulty has only 30 right. minutes or one hour, they could play the game. So, yeah. Right. That's the only but, reason. So there is no reason for nobody, for, for anybody to be afraid of playing this game. It's a no. quite easy game. Again, play no, a card, flip it, carry it. <laughs> three words. <laughs> three words. Now, Scott, Shelley, do you guys have any last words that you want to say to the potential backers as the game developers of this game? Um, I would just echo what the others have said, and yeah, it's if you enjoy Beatles games, then mm. this is one you're going to like. So, nice. yeah, whether whether you back the campaign or not, get it at some point. Right. <laughs> um, ideally, back the campaign because that <laughs> helps everybody. Yeah. yeah, I I would just say enjoy the journey. Like with any Vital game, the story he's telling may not be immediately clear in that first play right. as you look at the graphics and the illustrations and you know present and flip and share the card as Vital likes <laughs> to say right the story may not be immediately apparent but the right. more you delve into the game and the more plays you have it, it's going to be you're just going to love the journey and the story that he's he's created with this game well, thank you three for hanging out with me today and talking about this whole design process of inventions. Um, like you heard, it is now live on Kickstarter. So go over there and get it. There is a QR code, wherever it is. And also you can go to the <laughs> website, um, but it is on Kickstarter. So go back it, help support these people and we will see you all there. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a lovely day. And bye -bye. see you later. Bye. Thank Bye. You,